one charity golf event yesterday. Now you're wearing Masters clothing around. I got to play there. Did you? Yeah. Nice. How was that? Uh, amazing. Just, yeah. yeah. Anything you expect. That and better. Now, Raymond yeah. told me when he played it, it was so much hillier than he expected. Yeah, the undulations, like you, TV doesn't do it justice. That's, That's like what the he common said, yeah. theme. Did you it, feel bad leaving a divot or anything? I feel like <laughs> I wanted to take nice. every divot. Yeah, like, right. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if they're ever letting me back. I was trying to steal coffee yeah, cups. Like, you, you name it, I was taking the lamps, yeah, whatever I could get. Former Bruin Sean Thornton is in the house, and it's great to see you again. Good to see you. How you, are you, guys doing? you had your, uh, your charity golf event yesterday. I did. I did. And uh, it looked like a gigantic turnout. And Play, it was awesome again. We're very lucky. I think uh, a lot of the same people keep coming back, but we sell out quick. Uh, I think we had 26 foursomes. I, I usually cap it at 26, 27. Yeah. Uh, raised a ton of money. I'm not sure what the exact numbers are yet, but uh, yeah, it, very lucky that I've been gone for what, four years now and uh, people still want to come out and hang out and play golf and make some uh, money for charity. You're gone, but you're still around, right? I mean, you're, you're still coming back here all the time. still have a place much, here, right? As much as I can, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, not as much as I'd like, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back back and forth. Hey, Butchie. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? We had, to, we had to get Butch off TV to bring him in here. Uh, he was busy. He was busy. With, <laughs> yeah. He wants to be taller. Guys, Thornton's sitting in here. Uh, Bruins head coach Bruce Cassidy joins us as Butchie well. Butchie was my coach in the minors way, way back in the day. Now, which team? Norfolk Admirals. That was a little while ago. Pierre Maguire oh, would have known, known that. We've got to turn Bruce's uh, headset on you guys. There we go. So, uh, so was he the same player back then, Bruce, that he was with the Bruins? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't imagine where this answer's going. <laughs> no, what I'll tell you about Sean is that uh, I remember that year he had some opportunities to score, and I had a chat with him. I said, you know, you have the ability to score goals, so don't overlook those. And I always thought he did, and sure enough, I think he got, what was it, 10? Double digits in Boston years later, so you always think, hope maybe some words stick with him. But he was uh, <laughs> he was a great big brother. We had a lot of young players, and you don't survive in the American League without those type of uh, leadership uh, uh, guys on your team. And that's why I think we had a good hockey club, and Sean did a great job. And not only did he win in Boston, he won in Anaheim. So he goes out a champion, and I couldn't be prouder of him. Do you think players like Sean are being phased out of the game now, or is there still room for a, a tough guy like that? Uh, there is if you can play, and yeah. Sean was able to do that. Uh, Matter of and, opinion, but I'll take it. <laughs> well, uh, I saw that little double deep <laughs> yeah, move we, that you <laughs> scored on yeah, that yeah, time. Yeah, one, so yeah. the, that's the difference. If, if yeah. you're a guy that's uh, strictly a pugilist or, or that's your only skill set, then I, I don't believe you can play anymore. You've got to be able to play five on five, probably contribute to a special teams as uh, uh, the penalty kill or maybe be a net front guy in the power play. But at the end of the day, I do believe that five on five is important that you, you be able to help your team. And uh, and if not, then I think it's, yeah, it'll have a tough time. But you did make me a penalty killer in the minors, by the really? way. Really? Yes, he was the one that put me on the PK. We had a pretty decent PK back then. That's back when I could skate. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> put some weight on after. <laughs> you had to put weight on if you were going to make a living the way you made a living. Exactly. <laughs> you were one of the people who, uh, and, and Bruce talked about it, it mattered to you. You, you. you wanted accountability from your teammates. You demanded accountability from your teammates. Is that a hard line to to sort of straddle there about being a good teammate, but also demanding, hey, we need something from you here. I think if you demand the most from yourself, then you're able to have that conversation with other people. Now, if you're, you know, packing it in and just going through the motions, you can't be calling people out. But I think if you put it on yourself to, you know, give everything you have every day and you put your face on the line uh, in some situations, then you have that uh, maybe card in your back pocket that you can have a conversation with somebody that's a better hockey player than you but that maybe isn't giving everything they need to in that uh, instance, but I listen. I, I think I've always been. Uh, you always know where you stand with me. Uh, there's no real gray area, and I, in the locker room in life, it, it, it's the same thing, right? You just be real and have a conversation. I don't think anybody takes offense to that. Bruce, what have you thought of the off season, particularly in your division? Some of the moves that those teams were Florida able to make. Panthers look great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's what he was about to say. I, I actually agree with that. I think they're one, they'll be a definitely one. Of, I don't I don't know if surprise is the right word the way they finished last year, but uh, I'd be on the lookout for them. Uh, obviously, Tampa returns basically their whole hockey club, so they're going to be strong. T Toronto adds Tavares. They did subtract a few players. People f forget Van Riemsdyk, Bozak. Those were good players for them. Um, so, but I assume it'll be an upgrade. Uh, he's a world-class player. It'll just force us to be a little more focused every night, so I don't think it's a bad thing to have a very good internal uh, competition in your own division. Um, 
ask me again in February. I might have right. a different opinion, right. but <laughs> uh, I think we'll be better just from our growth of our younger players. We added so many uh, new players next year. It's not automatic. That's the message we have to get across. Doesn't mean you're going to have a better year than your first, but um, I like the character of those guys, so I believe they'll come back and understand what it takes, and, and uh, I still believe our core has a lot to give, so it, sh it should be an exciting year for our division specifically. Sean, you played in Boston where hockey really matters, and now you're working for the Florida Panthers. Is it a chore to grow that same sort of hockey interest in a non-traditional hockey market? Yeah, Florida's, I mean, it's not an easy market, that's for sure. In any sport, I mean, you look at uh, last year, University of Miami had that amazing run, and then they were sold out every single night. Uh, there's a lot to do in Florida. There's beaches, there's sun, there's golf courses. You have to put a product on the ice that people want to uh, watch to get people out and I think we're there now I think as an organization we've uh, we're kind of have an inflection point like we're turning the corner and I think our young core is really ready to make a move and I know it's going to be a tough conversation because I'm in Boston talking about <laughs> it but I think we're a really good team and I think if we win people will show up but uh, I think that's all you need to do is just win. I'm curious how you guys feel about Brad Marchand, who is a, he's a fan favorite here, but you have to sort of put up with some of the stuff that goes on with him. You as a coach, and then you as a teammate, so different sort of uh, you know ways of looking at it. But is that just, you can't take all the the hijinks I feel like out of his game and have him still be the same player, or is is that wrong? Well, from my perspective, uh, we we love the the performance on the ice. We're working on uh, Brad being a little more focused on that part of it. Uh, we've had conversations with him. He's a year older. He's a year more mature. Um, and we, we feel he'll take steps in the right direction. I truly believe at the end of last year, he, he reflected on some of the stuff that was talked about him and wants to put that out of his game and behind him. But Brad, like you said, hijinks, whatever yeah, word you want to use, <laughs> there'll always be a little bit in that his yeah. game. And I think that helps him. We just got to try to make sure that we temper it and try to get him on that exact, just on the edge of that yeah. line. And, and that's that's a difficult chore, but uh, that's the task at hand. And, and he has to be first and foremost accepting of that, and he has to do right. it. And I think he's recognized that. So, uh, But he's a world-class player and talent and a great teammate. Um, so that those are the parts we love about him, and those are the parts we're looking forward to this year. For me, uh, did you guys read his Players' Tribune? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one that, the line that stuck out to me was, you know, people say they'll do whatever it takes to win, but, but will they? And I kind of think I was cut from the same cloth like nothing was offside I would do whatever all that mattered was winning and he has that attitude so call him hijinks call him whatever they are he will do whatever it takes to win and that's more important than anything else in my uh, where I stand I you want to kiss people like people do whatever the, yeah. do whatever you want to do <laughs> as long as you're trying Bruce feels the exact yeah, same I know, way I know but <laughs> okay whatever he's doing he's doing right. it right his heart is in I'm gonna win at all costs and I not everybody's cut from that cloth so I, I really respect the way he plays the game Bruce, there's a 41-year-old uh, quarterback playing in Foxborough who's doing a pretty good job and was MVP of the league as a 40-year-old quarterback. You've got a 40-year-old defenseman, and I've talked to him about it, and he really likes what Brady's doing and, and tries to emulate it. There are people in this town who say, Zdeno Chara's washed up, he can't play anymore. What does his coach say? Well, obviously that's incorrect. He's one of our, if not our best defensemen, uh, shutdown role big part of the penalty kill I think he can still play in the power play we've kind of used other players he would tell me differently and he's ready to go uh, but it's worked out for us so we've been able to to, to incorporate other people so, so their shared responsibility throughout the lineup um, but Z's got a lot of hockey left in him uh, I know that for a fact he trains as hard uh, harder than anybody I know uh, his, you know his conditioning's through the roof he's trying to stay current with the game and the way it's played and working on his puck skills and uh, getting back on pucks, uh, those little things that maybe the average person doesn't see every night that he's working on uh, probably three or four games after we lost out. So he wants to have his legacy run a lot longer than uh, just one more year. Um, I wouldn't put him past him, play four or five more years in this league. But again, that's speculation, but we're looking forward to another great year from him, and he's our, he's our leader. And Sean, I, I, just to follow up on that, because you and I have talked about Z as well, I saw him this past season play an entire two-minute penalty killing shift, couldn't get off the ice, got challenged for a fight about three minutes into his shift by a guy who's like 6'7", and he said, okay, I mean, if you got to do it, you got to do it. it. That's not even human. No, conditioning's never a problem with Big Z, that's for sure. He's a, he's a specimen. For me, people, yeah, he's 41, we're the same age. Uh, everybody has their opinions, but I don't think there's anybody that can do what he does. I mean, he's six foot nine, 255 pounds, uh, solid as a rock. He's a smart hockey player as well. I, I, 
people can say what they want, but there's nobody else. We'd be happy to have him. There's nobody in the league that can do what he does uh, on a consistent basis. He's been doing it for 20 years. I mean, you can't take that away from him. And, Bruce, you had an update yesterday on Patrice Bergeron. Looks like things are going going the right way. Yeah, as far as, you know, we know that he's he's on schedule to start the year with us. Um, you know, of course, something could happen between now and then, but he's doing great. Uh, all the guys that were injured for us at the end of the year, and it was a long list, seem to be progressing well. We don't anticipate anybody being behind uh, to start the season. Some guys will get more uh, work in preseason than others. That's that's part of the, the process. Uh the rehab process but right now we're looking to be fully healthy and ready to go guys the hockey community always steps up and helps out and you guys are are emblematic of that it's great to see both of you i get to see you like once a year i know i get to see bruce <laughs> a lot but i get to see you about once a year i know i'm not up here enough it's tough now though in the real real world i'm in the office from 8 30 to 5 30 wearing a sh- shirt and tie and yeah, everything uh, some days yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah guys thank you so much we really appreciate it good to see you all right fellas